to bother when a new version of something comes out and it's just different in every way imaginable? I tell you what, every time my phone updates, something is new. Like the clock looks different, some of the icons have changed. And I think, why wouldn't they just be happy with the way it was? I sure was. I didn't mind the way it looked. And when we look at OSPF version 3, we see that they were not content with the way OSPF version 2 was put together in some ways. As such, they changed the way that OSPF 3 handles LSA types. It would be wonderful for us if they were all identical to OSPF version 2, and fortunately a lot of overlap does exist. However, we are going to need to know the differences between the LSA types between the two versions. So, by the end of this video, you will be able to identify the LSA types used in OSPF version 3. Fortunately, by learning the OSPF version 2 LSA types, all we really need to do is focus on the differences between OSPF v2 and OSPF v3. One of the biggest differences is that when we have two routers exchanging LSAs, we remember that each router is going to send out type 1 LSAs. And then, if this is a broadcast link, then every DR on that broadcast link is also going to send a type 2 LSA. Now in OSPF v2, these types are going to include a lot of information, including the prefixes the subnets that are on the links that we're sending information about. But in OSPF version 3, we do not send prefixes. We are going to send prefixes as a separate LSA type that we're going to talk about here in a few minutes. As such, type 1s are focused primarily on the links, the statuses, the cost of those links. And type 2s are going to be focused on the routers that are attached to my broadcast domain. And again, we're sending no prefixes as part of these two LSA types. Now there is a change with type 3s and type 4s as well. But it doesn't have to do with functionality in any way, it only has to do with the name. Type 3s were called summary LSAs in OSPF v2, but in OSPF version 3 we call this the inter area prefix LSA. Keep in mind that a type 3 is sent by an area border router or ABR. That would be a router with a leg in two different areas, and we're going to take information from one and send it into another, hence inter area communications. In OSPF version 2 we called that a summary LSA. But a summary LSA doesn't summarize addresses, at least not from a networking perspective. We're not summarizing different subnets into what we call a summary address, which is a combination or a supernet of individual subnets. So in other words, an LSA summary LSA does nothing to summarize the individual networks that are being advertised. And I'm guessing there was some confusion around that, hence OSPF version 2, that summary address is going to go away, and we're going to call it the inter-area prefix LSA. Now type 4s have also been renamed, they are now called the inter-area router LSAs. And the reason we're calling it an inter-area router is we recall a type 4s advertising the location of an ASBR, an autonomous system boundary router. Now routers in other areas need to know where this ASBR lives, and so we want to rely on the ABRs to let them know. And therefore they're going to send more inter-area communications, but this time it's not focused on prefixes, it's focused on where that router lives. Hence the being the inner area router LSA as opposed to the inter area prefix LSA. Now fortunately types 5 and 7 are left alone, we have no functionality change, we have no name change. So with that we can move on to LSA type 8. Now type 8 is not an opaque LSA, in fact we don't have opaque LSAs in OSPF version 3. Instead this type 8 is called a link LSA. In the world of IP version 6 we have link local addresses. And these link local addresses, as you can imagine from the name, are only significant on a local link. Rather than using the full IPv6 address that's assigned to an interface, we can instead use the link local address for basic communications. And these link local addresses, by the way, these are not advertised throughout the network. We're not routing towards link local addresses. They're truly link local. They cannot exist outside of this one link. Now every router is going to send a link LSA, and this link LSA is going to contain prefix information, but only for link local addresses. And link LSAs are not flooded to the area, they stay local to that link. Now type 9s are going to fill that gap that we created earlier when we said we're not going to send prefix information anymore on type 1 and type 2 LSAs. Type 9s are called the intra-area prefix LSAs. Intra-area meaning it stays internal to a single area, this is going to flood within an area and advertise all of the prefixes that we've left out of those earlier type 1 and type 2s. Now last but not least, OSPF version 3 for whatever reason skips over type 10 and we have a type 11 LSA. This type 11 is called a grace LSA, and it is used for graceful restart within OSPF version 3. Again, we don't have those opaque LSA types in OSPF v3, which is how we handle graceful restarts within OSPF v2. So OSPF version 3 handles that with its own dedicated LSA type, the type 11 grace LSA, which by the way is not flooded beyond a single link. 
That is for neighbor to neighbor communication only. And that's it. Aside from that, OSPF v3 handles LSAs identically to OSPF version 2, but we do see that there are some differences that we need to become aware of when we're configuring OSPF version 3, not to mention when we're studying for the DC Core exam. And with that, you are now able to identify the LSA types used in OSPF v3. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.